Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. We're a center that's radically inclusive spiritual renegades who heal hearts and create community. We embrace conscious spiritual living and encourage everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of all their good. So let us begin with prayer. We just take a deep nourishing breath and we recognize the divine, the love and the joy and the peace that the divine is, that safety, that freedom, that ability to open, be open-hearted and open-minded that comes from the divine. And we are all individual expressions of all that the divine is and all of that lives within each of us. So what I know for today is that each one of us has shown up today by divine appointment and that there is something in this service, something in this message, in the music, in the reading that is touching you and you came here because you were meant to hear it. And I am so grateful for that. I am grateful for this community. I'm grateful for all the congregants. I'm grateful for everyone that watches every week and supports us as a community. And it's from all that gratitude that I release my words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, because I know the truth. The divine has watched this community become radically inclusive. The divine has watched who each of us are and has called it all good. So I can just say amen, and together we can affirm it, and so it is. And now I invite you to sing along with our music team as they sing, We'll Give a Voice. Oh, 
our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration, so I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever is called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. This is our time for community affirmation, and I invite you to read aloud with me. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation and thus to make the world a more joyful place.
that divine love, that divine wisdom. Breathing in all of that and releasing anything that's not serving us right this moment. With every breath, breathing in more of the divine and releasing more of whatever is not serving us. Knowing that in this very room, there's quite enough love, quite enough joy, quite enough power. All we need to do is connect with it. Feeling that indwelling presence. Holmes said, if we once let ourselves get past the outward appearance of the individual, we come to understand that life at the center of his being is the same as at the center of our own being. So as Bill continues to play, I invite you to awaken to that world of the one life that is the center of each person's being on this planet. Imagine a world in which every room has love, joy, peace, power.
So as we come back from this time of meditation, I invite you just to embrace whatever was birthed within you during that time of music and meditation. Feel that indwelling presence. Know the consciousness of a world in which every room can be filled with love and joy and hope and power. And we have that one spirit that combines us all and binds us together in unity. Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. A certain future awaits me. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10.23 We are not enough at home in the universe. We are afraid of it, afraid to live. If time ever comes to you and me when we see God in everything and in everybody, we will never be alone or lonely. Every experience will be but more vividly reveal the warmth and color and beauty and responsiveness of the universe in which we live. Its entire nature is given to us. We on the verge of a vast possibility. The indiv individual or nation without a vision must perish until the vision is reborn. What is our vision going to be in the midst of confusion, doubt, and uncertainty? It is either going to fall before the confusion and be destroyed, or something transcendent within us is going to rise and look to a certain future, to an eternal reality, to a God principle, to an infinite presence, responding to us according to our acceptance. There is no individual good. Good belongs to everyone. Good fulfills itself only as it multiplies itself. Therefore, there is no good that belongs to you and to me alone. No final peace to us only as individuals. The watchword is not exclusion, but inclusion. 
And the more good we release, the more good we experience. I am part of one tremendous whole whose nature is of God. It is in this divine nature, this inevitable union, that I consciously walk and talk with the infinite until it becomes dynamic and real to me. I am thankful for every opportunity to let God's life be expressed through me. I'm here to remind you of your magnificence to help you wake up to all the wonders that you are. I long to show you all the joy you're worthy of. I'm here to remind you how much you're true. music team for that great introduction and also I Robin for reading I just love the way she reads with so much uh, joy and emphasis so I had a congregant ask me about some of the ways that we define ourselves as a community and this series for August who we are was born my vision is that this series helps give us a better picture of what the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana actually stands for and what we embrace as we come together, as well as when we're moving through our daily lives. So you hear me state each week in the opening that we're radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And our members are steeped in conscious spiritual living. So I plan to use those five things for the five weeks of the month to explain each of those concepts. So today we're starting with the first one, radically inclusive and precisely what that means for our community. So your question for the day is this, what's the one thing that you might do or be so that you recognize that there is no individual good? Knowing the watchword is inclusion. So one more time, what's the one thing that you might do or be so that you recognize that there is no individual good? knowing that the watchword is inclusion. So we all know what inclusive means. It's the definition, uh, the dictionary defines it as encompassing everything concerned. However, you might be wondering what we mean when we say we're radically inclusive. And before I explain what it means to me as the spiritual leader of this community, I thought I'd let you see what some of our congregants had to say about it. Hello, I am Robin by Carpenter Briscoe. And it's funny, when I was asked this question about radical inclusivity, I had a reaction to the word radical. And I realized that to me, radical 
the word itself felt like a fist and that didn't feel right. And then when I expressed this, Reverend Larry said to me, radical is extensive, profoundly. That's really where the word comes from. That's what it's about. And so profoundly inclusive, extensively inclusive, that feels exactly like what being here is because I am very much myself when I arrive. I am a black lesbian that moved to the South from California and I was worried and then I got here and I was welcomed and it was wonderful and genuine and absolutely radically inclusive. Radically inclusive to me um, means that we are really accepting everyone, um, regardless of race, creed, color, gender identity, um, religion, anything. I mean, really because we are all one, and since we are all one, we should accept everybody. And that means that we just don't say that, we do it and we walk our walk. We don't just talk our talk. That's who we are. Good afternoon. I am here to talk about CSL, CELA, S-E-L-A, and why this community is radically inclusive. I know for a fact that this organization accepts people no matter what their race or creed or belief or uh, persuasion or background for exactly who they are and everyone is welcome so what makes that different from from someone saying you know everyone is welcome is that it doesn't matter how radical you are how different you are or um, feeling like like you may be unacceptable uh, this is a radically inclusive organization that welcomes you with open arms and says we accept you just as you are. I believe it's significant that we say we're radically inclusive because as Robin was saying earlier, radically means profoundly, extensively. It means thoroughly, wholly, completely. And that means there's no room for exclusion. When I was creating this community, my vision was that no matter who entered our sanctuary, they would be welcomed with open arms and with total acceptance. And for me, that's being radically inclusive. I have a little story that's written by Dr. Seuss and it's called The Sneetches. The Sneetches. Now the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars. The plain belly Sneetches had none upon ours. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag. We're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll never have nothing to do with those plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if, you, if your bellies had stars and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roast or picnics or parties or marshmallow roast, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they created them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. 
My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine, and he said, you want stars like a star belly snitch? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then the big machine roared, and it clomped, and it bonked, and it jerked, and it burked, and it bopped them about, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start, we're exactly like you, you can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties, and now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best Nietzsche's and they are the worst. But now how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which kind is what or the other way around? Then came up McBean with a very sly wink and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who? That is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like sneeches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine working very precisely moved all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air, they paraded about and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then of course, old Sylvester McMucky McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again. Changing their stars every minute or two, they kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. So while the sneeches might not have said it directly, they became radically inclusive that day. It is unfortunate that they had to spend all of their resources before they got to that point. And what I've noticed is sometimes it takes that spiritual two by four before we wake up to the obvious, to whatever is staring us right in the face. Anybody else ever had that problem? In our reading today, Holmes wrote that there is no individual good and that the watchword is inclusion. This concept is in 
extremely critical as we speak of being radically inclusive because it's not a sacrifice to be that way. Rather, it's a blessing to all of us because there is no individual good. Ernest Holmes founded this religion on tolerance and on inclusion. He stated more than once in his writings that the infinite is all embracing. The infinite is all embracing. So in founding the center in Louisiana in the deep south where there's so many religions that are based on dogma that is not inclusive, it was extremely important to me that we be radically inclusive. It's important that no one walk through our doors or connect with anyone from this center in any way without feeling a sense of inclusion and absolute acceptance. Eckhart Tolle wrote, to offer no resistance to life is to be in a state of grace, ease, and lightness. This state is then no longer dependent upon things in a certain way, good or bad. And no resistance to life is what being radically inclusive is about. Acceptance of you is not based on you being a certain way, that you have a certain background or a certain income or a specific skin tone or a specific education or anything else that's part of our human appearance on this planet. It's about who you are as an expression of the divine. Are you aware that if you take a drop of water out of the ocean and analyze it, the composition of that drop is the same as every other drop in the ocean? And here's the important thing. It takes all the drops to make up the ocean. We live in a world that is made up of individual drops of the divine, unique expressions of the one life that is each of our lives, individually and collectively, just as the drops of water in the ocean. Ernest Holmes in A New Design of Living wrote this, if we once let ourselves get past the outward appearance of the individual, we come to understand that life at the center of its being is the same as at the center of our being. Life which is never in conflict with itself, never in a state of disharmony. And Ernest Holmes went on to say, you need never view human personality as something unreal or unworthy, but rather as an individualization of the divine. It's the universal spirit that is incarnated in each one in a unique way. And that gives warmth, color, and variation to that which otherwise would be an eternal monotony. Can you imagine a world of only yous? I think that would be a really scary thought. But I'm proud to say that we here are radically inclusive, that we leave no room for doubt. It doesn't allow us to be like the Sneetches at the beginning of the story, looking for some outward sign for someone to be accepted. Ernest Holmes also wrote, it has been said that we know God only insofar as we can become God. So how can we get to know God if we're only willing to accept a small portion of the people on the planet because they're all God? Holmes also wrote, if our human relations are to mean the most to us, we must sense that there is hidden within, around, and through each of us a divine presence manifesting itself in infinite variations, the same impulse, the same love in life, but never quite alike in any two persons. So how do we go about sensing that divine presence that's hidden within, around, and through each of us, of which we're all a part? How do we go about embracing the infinite variations of love and life that walk this planet? we become radically inclusive. We recognize that the same love in life is hidden within, around, and through each person on this planet. Everything we see, touch, smell is made from the same stuff. It comes from the same source, and it doesn't matter how it shows up or what we call it. The key to living a radically inclusive life 
is to recognize that there is no separation in the eyes of the divine, that there is only one life. So I'm going to challenge you this week to release any belief that you have that there is a need for exclusion, to release any resistance to inclusion. In this philosophy, we believe that all things begin in thought, which is then followed by an understanding of what you want to have happen. You can be, do, and have anything you want. And if you want to be radically inclusive, let it begin in your thought. Let go of any exclusion that you might have had in the past. And by the way, no beating yourself up about it or feeling guilty about the fact that in the past you might have been exclusive in some way. Just let go of it. Release the past. Begin to live from this moment on with a concept of radical inclusivity. In the science of mind, we read that hate begets hate and strife produces strife. Love alone overcomes all and justifies the eternity of her dominion. So let's pray. <sighs> it is such a wonderful thought to recognize that one life that is God, that is our life right here and right now, that connection we have as an expression of that divine. Knowing that in this radical inclusion, we are just being who we've come here to be. What I know to be the truth is that each of us has within us that ability to see that what's manifesting within, through, and out each person is that same impulse, that same love and light, that same alikeness, and yet a little bit of uniqueness in each of us. So we recognize right now that each of us is fully an expression of the divine, that there is indeed, like the snitches, no difference. We're all just snitches on the beaches of this beautiful planet. Ah, so I am grateful. I'm grateful for this opportunity to come today and really explain to us who we are as a center I'm grateful for this wonderful planet that we live on and all the diversity that makes it definitely not monotonous. <sighs> and I'm grateful to remember that the God without is the God within me and the God within you and the God within everybody on this planet. And it's from all that gratitude that I just release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action because I know the truth. God has already seen this. The divine has already said yes to it. And any changes that we are desiring in our thoughts have already been called done and they're happening in reality. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And so the offertory song, which is coming up, it's just an opportunity for you to think about the many blessings that we have on this planet and to circulate your uh, good into this community. And we appreciate that. The love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. From the love
can find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100. Or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Rev. Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations. And we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. Thank you very much for donating to the Center for Spiritual Living and helping us to stay alive during this time. And I now invite you to listen to this beautiful song from the music team, We Are One. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to like us on Facebook at the Center for Spiritual Living Southeast Louisiana and follow us on YouTube. Our channel is CSLSELA. You can also join us for our community time. You have a little bit of time to go grab coffee or tea and maybe a snack and then come join us for a live discussion. The conference line, which we use every week, is 515-604-9000. So put it in your phone with the participation code 475-220. We begin with the discussion of the service and follow up with a process to help you dive more deeply into the concept of the day. We hope you'll join us. So in closing, I just invite you to become radically inclusive in your life. Make no room for exclusion. And remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth. And we here at CSL Southeast Louisiana know that we're definitely the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness. And may you recognize that everyone on this planet is an expression of the divine, all the same as we are. And when we do that, and we're radically inclusive, we feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive, alive forevermore. 